What's up everybody? Welcome to another video and I hope you're ready to flex those brain muscles. In this video we're going to practice simplifying algebraic expressions. So I have five examples here that we're going to practice and if you're really trying to get this stuff down and prepare for maybe a quiz or an exam, I recommend pausing the video at this point, pulling out a pencil and a piece of paper and trying some of these on your own. I'll have timestamps in the comments below so you can check your answers to any particular problems you'd like. Let's go ahead and get started. We'll get started on the first one. And before we start on the first one, since this is the first problem, I want to outline some preliminaries. So some things we really need to know and understand in order to make sense of this simplifying algebraic expressions idea. So the first is different properties. For example, the commutative property of addition. A plus B is the same thing as B plus A. The order of addition doesn't matter, and the same is true for multiplication. A times B always gives us the same thing as B times A. We also have the associative property. This I sort of think of as regrouping, right? If we add A and B together and then add C, that gives us the same thing as adding B and C together first and then adding A to that result. So that's the associative property. We use that less commonly when we're doing this stuff. We use commutative a lot more, but we definitely use the distributive property a lot. So this is when we're multiplying a number outside a parentheses where there's a sum inside the parentheses. And, and structures often show like two arrows for this, and I often do this as well, because it helps us think about what this a times the sum of b and c is equal to, which is a times b plus a times c, right? Distributive property, that's going to be really important. And finally, we have this idea of combining like terms. So like terms are terms that can be combined. For example, something like this, a minus 7, these aren't like terms, we can't combine this. This is as simple as this expression can get. However, something like 3a plus 5a, these can be combined. And the reason why is because Think about the definition of multiplication as repeated addition. 3 times a is a plus a plus a. 5 times a is a plus a plus a plus a plus a, right? So in total, we have 8 a's being added together. And that total is always going to be the result of adding the coefficients, right? And the same is going to be true about squared terms, right? Once we get to this example, we're going to see that these two are like terms. So let's go ahead and start. Let's go ahead and practice this. Hopefully that makes some sense and kind of prepares us a little better for what we're going to do. And again, since this is the first example, I'm going to show every single step. As we get further into the examples, I'm going to start skipping some steps, but it should still be relatively simple to follow. So let's see, 5a squared minus 2a minus 7a squared plus 6a plus 4. We want to group these a squared terms together, right? We want to group these a terms together and we just have one constant term. So that's not gonna be combined with anything. We are gonna be left with a plus four in this expression, okay? So since we have this commutative property, we can switch the order of addition. We can think about these minus 2a and minus 7a squareds as being plus negative 2a and plus negative 7a squared. That's what allows us to switch the order around. So we can say, minus 7a squared, right? We can group those together. Then we can do minus 2a plus 6a squared. We can group those together. Then we can write a plus 4. And now we can see we have the a squared terms together, we have the a terms together, and we have the single constant term by itself. Now we can combine our like terms. 5a squared minus 7a squared is negative 2a squared. And then we have negative 2a plus 6a, that's going to become plus 4a, and then we're left with that plus 4 at the end. Now it's perfectly fine if you skip this rearranging step. I really just show this to help you make sense of how we're able to just move this stuff around and combine it. It's because of this intermediate step. So for example, if you went straight to here, from here to here, that's totally fine, and that's probably what I'm going to do in the next example. But this is as simple as this algebraic expression will get. So let's try the next example. Here we have 3 plus 3 in parentheses 4 minus w minus 11. Okay, so now we have this parentheses here with a number being multiplied outside. So now is where we're going to apply the distributive property. 3 times 4 and 3 times negative w is one way to think about this. So let's go ahead and apply that first. 3 plus 3 times 4. And then we have minus. 3 times w, 
minus 11. And now you could very well do this in one step. For example, you could have just gone straight from the initial expression to 3 plus 12 minus 3w. We don't really need that in parentheses, right? Minus 11. That's totally fine. I just wanted to show the multiplication again. And so now again, instead of rearranging this, we can just look at all the constant terms. 3 plus 12 minus 11, and we can combine those, and we can notice that we just have a single w term, minus 3w. So we're definitely going to be left with a minus 3w in the simplest form of this expression. And our constant term is going to be 3 plus 12 minus 11, which is, let's see, 15 minus 11, that is 4. And this is as simple as this expression will get. Let's try another one. They get progressively harder. As you can see, now we have two different sets of parentheses to deal with, but we're still going to do the same thing. Really, our goal initially is always to get rid of all the parentheses, separate all these out uh, by plus or minuses, right? We want them all separate terms. So we're going to distribute the negative 3, we're going to distribute the 2, and this is really important. This is a mistake sometimes that's made, is this negative has to come along with the 3 when we distribute negative 3. So for example, we end up with negative 3 times negative 5, and then plus negative 3 times 2x. I'm going to write that as minus 3 times 2x because it's the same thing. Then that minus 8x just chills there, minus 8x. Then we have plus, that 2 goes to 2x minus 2. Now let's look at all our terms. Well, actually, first we should combine these, right? Negative 3 times negative 5 gives us 15. Then we have minus 3 times 2 times x. So we can combine the 3 and the 2 to give us 6x. Then we have minus 8x plus 2x minus 2. So again, this is always our goal initially, is to get rid of the parentheses and get it into something that looks like this. All the terms are spread out. We can pretty easily identify like terms, right? I see a 15 and a negative 2. So I'm going to have a 13 in my simplified expression. And then I also see x terms here minus 6x, minus 8x, plus 2x. So I can add up all those coefficients. So negative 6 minus 8, negative 14. And then plus 2 is negative 12. So I'm left with negative 12x plus 13. And that's as simple as this expression will get. All right, two more examples. Hopefully this is making sense. So in this fourth example, we got a lot going on. We got parentheses, we got brackets. So let's make sense of this. And really, there are two ways to approach simplifying this expression. The first is we could start with this 2 and distribute it. We have to be really careful doing this because this 2 distributes to each term, and there are three terms in here. I'll see a lot of students try to distribute the 2 inside parentheses here. We can't do that. So if we do decide to go this route, then it's going to be 2 times 5. We're going to have a 10 here then there's going to be a little 2 here, then this is going to become an 8. And you can do that, and you should get the same answer. So if you want to try that, that's fine. What I like to do is just keep the 2 outside and just work with everything inside. Let's separate all of this into separate terms, and then we can distribute the 2 once we're done with that, okay? So let's try that. 5 times a plus 5 times 3. And another reason why I wanted to do it this way is because I wanted to talk about what happens when you have just a minus here. And a lot of times we can say, well, we think of this as a negative 1. Negative 1 times a squared, negative 1 times a. That's how a lot of teachers will explain it, and that's fine, as long as you remember that this minus sign distributes, right? So what we have here is 5 times a, that's 5a, plus 5 times 3, I'm just going to go ahead and write that out as 15, minus a squared. And again, don't write plus a because that minus goes to the a as well. And then we have plus 4. So now we can actually combine like terms inside the brackets and then distribute the 2, and then we should be done. So let's see what like terms we have here. We have a minus a squared. That's by itself. So we're definitely just going to have a minus a squared. So we're going to have 2 times negative a squared. What else will we have? 5a minus a. That's going to become plus 4a, right? You see the 5a minus a. Then we have 15 plus 4, that's going to become plus 19. And now we can just multiply everything by 2. So this is equal to negative 2a squared plus 8a 
plus 38. And if you did it the other way, you should get the exact same answer. It's perfectly fine. It's just a matter of preference. I decided to work sort of from inside out. You could also work from outside in. So let's try this next example, and this is one involving fractions. So don't be scared. It works the same way. We see parentheses here. We see opportunities to apply the distributed property. So we're going to take those opportunities. We're going to distribute this one eighth and distribute this negative two thirds. And this time we have three terms to distribute to, and that's fine. It just works the exact same way. Negative two thirds gets multiplied to all three of those terms. So let's see if we can write this out. What I encourage you to do when you first write these out is just keep them in fraction form. So 24 times 1 8, we can write as 24 over 8. We'll simplify in the next step. I just want to make sure we get everything written down correctly. This is 16 over 8, and that's an M. Ooh, now we have two different variables as well. Let's see, minus 2 times 3 over 3 M minus, what does this become? Well, now it becomes a plus, right? Because we have minus 2 thirds times negative 18 n, negative negative, so now we have plus, and we have two times 18 in the numerator over three. So hopefully you can see how I'm getting this. Here's the two thirds in here, right? Times 18, we can think of that as 18 over one, and I'm just writing it as one fraction, and then the n just hangs out there, and what do we have left? Again, another minus minus, so that's plus, and this is two times two over three, and then don't forget this plus two thirds off here in the end. So now we're going to do all the simplifying in one step. We have everything written down correctly. Let's simplify. So 24 over 8. Remember, a fraction we can think of as a division. 24 divided by 8, so that's 3, right? 8 goes into 24 three times. So this is 3n minus 2m. 18 goes into 16 two times. Minus, this is why I like writing it this way because look, we can look at things that are equal to 1. 3 over 3 is 1, right? So those just cancel. We end up with 2m. We can do a similar thing here. What exactly cancels? Well, I think this 3 over 18, sorry, 18 over 3, rather, right? 3 goes into 18 six times. So what we can do is we can cross out the 3, write a 1, cross out the 18, write a 6. So 18 over 3 is the same as 6 over 1. And since we have this 2 here in the numerator, what we're left with is 2 times 6n, which is 12n. Hopefully that made sense. 12n plus, what do we have here? 2 times 2 over 3. That can't be simplified, so that's just going to be 4 over 3 plus 2 over 3. Now let's see if we can combine these like terms. What do we have? We have 2n terms, 3n plus 12n. We have two m terms, minus 2m, minus 2m, and we have two constant terms. So I'm just going to write to the n terms first. So 3n plus 12n is 15n. Then I have two of those minus 2m's, so that's going to become minus 4m. Then I have plus, let's see, 4 thirds plus 2 thirds. That's 6 thirds, but we can actually simplify this. 6 thirds is the same as 2, so I'm just going to go ahead and write this as 2. And that is as simple as this expression can get. So hopefully you see that it's not too bad. I personally like writing out in this way, keeping them all as fractions. I personally feel like it makes it easier to simplify. You can do whatever you want. If you want to go straight from 1 8 times 24 to 3n, you can do that. That's perfectly fine. As long as you get the right answer, whatever method works, works. Ask any questions below. Leave a comment if you like. And keep flexing those brain muscles. I'll see you on the next video.